unmute, I've been muted here for the last minute. So um, welcome to our reference architecture call. Uh, can folks confirm they can hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, Dan. Thanks. So um, I, we have a new version of the landscape that we're talking about that I sent out by email yesterday. And um, I want to thank Lucina for taking notes today. Um, I'd love to uh, get people's impressions on this and changes or um, ideas for either this version or things we might want to change going forward. Um, I think we have several folks from NAFS on the call. And so if um, they're willing, I would actually maybe call on Ginger first if um, you have any thoughts on this or if you, uh, you just want to let us know if you just want to listen in. And it's um, star six to unmute Ginger. Um, I'm happy just listening in to start with. Um, you know, I read your email that um, you had written back to Derek, and I understand uh, the multi-categorying thing would make things uh, even more busy than it is right now. So uh, I'm just going to listen in for right now and, and see where we best fit. Okay. Um, Lee, could I maybe call on you? Um, I think you had some concerns about Hysterix and um, others, and um, I think there's some belief that um, uh, Envoy is going to be unhappy with being moved over to Load Balancer. And I think you were making an argument that they needed to be um, because they don't have a control plane. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm trying to refresh my memory on the that email that I had sent um, saying, I think, just that. Um, uh, so it is right now the, the categories as we have them RPC, load balancer, API gateway, service mesh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's certain, I don't know. I don't know how, how much this plays into, or the popularity of certain terms play into how it is that different projects would like to be categorized. Um, but in, in this case, like service mesh being, I think, a very hot and popular topic and one that you know, speaks beyond load balancer. Um, Dan, do you recollect that I say I was saying, hey, perhaps Envoy isn't necessarily appropriately, doesn't necessarily sit into service mesh as the most appropriate category? Um, that would make. I may be misremembering because it was a, a month ago, but yeah, my my uh, memory is that uh, you were saying the the key dis deciding factor of a service mesh is a control plane as opposed to a data plane and that uh, Envoy very much doesn't have that control plane. That, uh, I, I agree with myself. <laughs> Just, <laughs> what an insightful <laughs> comment you made. Um, and of course, anyone else can feel um, free um, to uh, uh, speak up. Not to interject in front of every, anyone else, but give some additional context to the statement that Dan had said was that I think um, uh, one way that that statement is implicitly reinforced is that if you look at projects that fall into the service mesh category, and there are you know, maybe a few that we don't have listed here, they are Envoy has enjoyed. Um, a lot of reuse and ingestion into other projects. Those other projects are building capabilities on top of Envoy. And um, somewhat generally, those capabilities are oftentimes referred to as the control plane. Um, whether it's a control plane or just um, uh, some other set of code that's giving Envoy instruction uh, and telling Envoy what, what to do, uh, there's a lot of that. There's um, there's one in here that probably falls more into the API gateway category called ambassador. Um, and we, we might have it in this list or not. I'm not sure. I don't know that we, we have to. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's under API gateway. So it's built on. So this is a great example then. That, so ambassador is prominently built on top of Envoy, but it adds some additional things toward what you would need as an API gateway. Um, Istio leverages Envoy, but it can be displaced by other, by Nginx or, um, uh, or other load balancers, some of which we aren't in here. But, um, and so I think that actually just giving those as examples reinforces the notion that, um, hey, Envoy isn't, you know, doesn't have all the capabilities that you would expect of a mesh itself. 
but is a fantastic project that other that not only is a load balancer onto its own, but that other projects have built on top of to extend it into other categories. Yeah, I hope Matt agrees with what you will we'll yeah. see. Maybe the terminology reverse proxy would be better than load balancer. Um, since load balancing is kind of one specific use case of a reverse proxy. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, I mean, that's like a really concrete proposal that's pretty easy to change. So if you definitely feel like reverse proxy is the superset term, I, that, that's I, not a term that concerns me. Yeah, I, I think it probably the better term, in my opinion. Any other feedback? So Envoy describes itself as an edge and service proxy. <coughs> so I wonder if service Pro proxy would be a, a more generic proxy. than reverse proxy. Yeah, or, or just, yeah, service proxy. Rever I mean, reverse, reverse proxy is pretty much standard nomenclature. <coughs> you know, things like HA and GenX all consider, the sum, consider themselves as reverse proxies to do implement things like load balancing, other, you know, other types of things you could do with a reverse proxy. Uh, as opposed to like squid is what people think of as a, as a forward proxy. Yeah, or like, you know, content. Yeah, you know, when I think of squid, I think of kind of content caching and, and that, you know, that, that's like a, cap you know, a, a capability that Nginx provides as a reverse proxy. But uh, maybe Chris, it sounds like what you're trying to say is um, reverse proxy is the base. Yeah, I mean service proxy may may work also, but I think I think I'm I'm more open to calling. I, I think it I'm, yeah, I, I think that's the one I'm I'm leaning towards if, if folks don't want to put yeah. it back in a different direction. Okay, Tyler said Squid could be a reverse proxy too. I mean yeah, so it's service proxy may kind of encompass both reverse and, and forward sale. So. Let's let's do service. They're proxy. all trying to add features. Yeah, the same features that other projects. Yeah. Have. So I, I would do well, service. I, proxy. I do want to, yeah, re reiterate that taxonomy is hard, and there is no perfect answer for this stuff. Um, no, almost no project fits fully yeah. into one subcategory and into none of the others. We are just trying to find a, a good enough answer. So um, I think we'll, we'll go with service proxy. Um, did you, Lee, want to speak up on anything else? Well, um, yeah, uh, maybe I will make this next statement by reinforcing what you just said, which is categorization is, is hard. Um, the way in which um, I had thought of Hystrix um, in the past, and even a little bit of ribbon and finagle and aka was something of client libraries, which isn't the category that we have here. I don't. I'm not advocating that we create yet another category, um, but just. But I think then you, you'd ask that you know about history explicitly, and so um, kind of to the same characterizing or definitive line for how we were qualifying things that fall into service mesh. It was like, well, you know, um, for me, Hystrix landed into like a client library um, category, but. Um, yeah. So uh, for Hystrix, I was going to use the excuse that they, they don't have a commit in the last four months to um, remove them for now. And uh, we can look at adding them back at, some point in the future if they if the project becomes active again but it's may 4th is their last um commit and and we generally try to kick people out after um three months um the the place where it also has come up is we had um service comb under which we moved up to application definition and image build and I think it's just service comb where it's just, it's a little bit of a strange project. So it's a microservice framework with functionality of service management. 
um, I, I kind of roughly put it in application definition, but it didn't didn't seem like a perfect fit. For, for my part, I haven't looked at service com, but Dan, you did take the words out of my mouth about um, Hystrix. I, I was hesitant to suggest that maybe maybe it's not a happening project, and so maybe it's not worth. But yeah. Um, I do want to give a um, a shout out here to uh, Andre Kozlov, who's the developer in in uh, Europe, who's been working with us for almost a year now on the interactive landscape, and has just done uh, spectacular work on having this dynamically generated uh, static landscape. So he's on the call for the first time, um, and I will just paste in two kind of cool links um, that to sort of get a, one of the things that this now allows is that uh, you can filter on the static landscape. So the, the first link is um, just looking at the Apache projects. And I think it's pretty interesting how they are all on the top left side of our, of our landscape. And then here are the CNCF ones. And you can see that um, we're sort of much more scattered around, but there's still definitely some areas that don't have a, uh, a CNCF hosted project yet. Okay, let me um, open it up to some other folks on the call. Uh, Taylor, curious if you wanna uh, offer any suggestions or feedback or Watson? Michael Ducey? Uh, yeah, I had a couple questions, uh, mainly around um, we want to put products on and projects on here, not necessarily companies. Is that correct? Yeah, it's very much designed for projects in, in, in white and products, not open source products in gray. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of changes I would just suggest um, around Sysdig. So we should put something around Sysdig Monitor in um, the observability and analytics section, and then Cystic Secure, uh, as well as Cystic Falco, which I see is on there underneath the security uh, and compliance section as well. Okay, the challenge for you is that we generally have a rule of um, one product per company, um, or, or else, uh, that, so it's sort of the product that the, the company is best known for. Sure. Um, and the exception for it that we do is, um, well, the, the two exceptions, I guess, are um, open source projects. So like HashiCorp is on here um, five times and um, uh, a few cloud providers that have a, but just a huge number of offerings. But even there, we've been pretty stingy on how many we do. But I, I think the simplest one is just the, what's already listed on, on platform you're change, saying just change it from Sysdig to Sysdig Monitor, correct? Um, it's not under platform, it's under observability and analysis. Yeah, I'm sorry, that, that's what I meant. Uh, yeah. Yeah, under, under observability. Um, so if you could even just uh, slack me the details, I'm, I'm happy to make that change for you right away. Because I actually, I think we are just about ready to um, publish this and, and hopefully it's going to get kind of a new um, focus and engagement when people see how cool it is to statically generate these, um, dynamically generate these static images. Yeah, it is. Um, um, I was looking at this earlier with Jerry, and uh, generally speaking, I think it looks pretty good. I think the only question that it came up was the Envoy one, but um, it sounds like that's already been answered. So. I just pasted in one more link for uh, HashiCorp to see sort of their view of the landscape. 
Yeah, I guess we need more open source projects then, huh? <laughs> what yeah, are the I, I plans? Mean, just, yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I was wondering, what are the plans for the projects that are going um, eventually more and more, hopefully, are graduated sandbox, but those type of, um, on the last view that you have, those are larger, they're taking up more room. So what are the plans with that as more and more get added? Uh, in principle, the... Um, so yeah, at some point we'll have so many projects on here that this won't work anymore, I guess is, is another way of, of answering it. For now, um, we can slightly shrink the size of the, um, of the cards if we needed to. So I'm, I'm hoping we have another six months or a year before we need to do a major um, rethinking of this. And I mean, okay. I, I will point out that, yeah, the kind of natural things we could get rid of is the the platforms and the the KCSPs and the KTPs, but it, it would bum me out a little bit to do that because um, you know they're uh, some of the biggest supporters of of what we're trying to do at CNCF. So I I, I would hate to remove them, but um, hopefully we can last last a while longer. Maybe I mean, they'll I be like sort the of highlighting. Like, I'm just wondering uh, the plans. Yeah. If well. Um, is there a way to view projects? We were just talking about um, Envoy being in as a for service mesh. Where is it going to go? Would it be reverse proxy and other things? There's projects which different um, people would think should be in a different category. Is there support for saying this project is a main category, but you can filter and look at it in a different category? So it sh would actually show up. Yeah, there's definitely not, and um, it is something that we could potentially add. But basically, what uh, you know, we have this landscape.yml file, which drives the whole landscape. And what's occurred to me um, is to add a separate, uh, essentially, a new key and value. Um, which would be alternative subcategories. Um, and um, so here's the landscape. And you could imagine just for any of them being able to also list something as uh, in, um, yeah, I mean, I actually, um, maybe Ginger wants to speak up on that. For, for Nats, Ginger, you're, you've suggested that some people are using it as uh, an RPC platform, and some people are using it as a, as a service mesh as well, correct? Yes, and so we, we feel that NATS is just, it can be in different categories and not just in uh, the messaging and streaming. Um, so we would like, like that would be a good um, maybe solution to what we're saying where we could have the main landscape with us in the streaming and messaging, but then if you filter it differently, you could also see it in, in other spaces. I think that might be a good plan. I think that would be a great idea. Not to make things uh, harder. For sorry, you, who else is? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Colin. Oh, and the yeah, team. Um, yeah I, I do think that'd be a great idea of having subcategories maybe in the or overlapping categories maybe in the project details and then you know from a different perspective being able to filter so show me everything that can be a load balancer or show me everything that can be a service mesh and maybe on this front page you see the primary areas that projects are in but upon filtering you can get a more detailed list right I like that idea. This is Craig, because um, I was just looking at the the issue, and and you know we talked about the the moment ago the kind of policy, the principle that uh, each company, except for the big cloud companies uh, that has non open source projects, only gets one entry, sort of their flagship. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand that principle, and I kind of like the idea that if we're starting to talk about you know, multiple category entries, we also have the possibility of having multiple product entries. You know, for example, the 
company I work for, JFrog, has a technology called X-Ray, which uh, helps do the security and license management for Docker images. And so it uh -huh. would seem to belong in the security and compliance category, but it isn't open source and we're not AWS, Google, or Microsoft. So uh, I like the idea of being able to have multiple entries in multiple categories, even if it isn't the same product. Yeah, and, and again, I think you can see our, uh, okay, so I, I mean, the alternative subcategories is not, a, is not a crazy way of going about it. I, I mean, I think uh, one of the initial challenges on it is just um, how to fill in for the 580 uh, projects and products we have now. Um, but of course we could start small. So, hi, this is Jerry Jennings. I have raised a similar issue on the mailing list. Um, is there any reason if we're just going to show the primary subcategory on the landscape, not to allow multiple alternate subcategories that people could filter down because there are some products that have multiple uses and it just seems reasonable that you want to be able to search for those alternate uses as well. Well, I'm definitely assuming it would be a list. So it would be alternative okay. subcategories and then a comma separated list of um, all the ones that the project can also fit into. Excellent. Yeah, you know, um, Quinton had made a proposal by email a few weeks ago about I think he called it facets, and I, I didn't, I didn't totally get it, um, and I, I, I owe him a response on it. But I, I'm, I'm wondering whether this alternative, yeah, he says that the themes is what he called it to talk about security or high performance or large scale ease of use, um, and, and the challenge on all of these is that to kind of make that work, it, you'd really like to. Um, update metadata for all 580 projects at once, which which becomes pretty hard. Um, where the alternative subcategories has a a nice advantage that you can do it incrementally. Um, I will point out how uh, yeah, if pleased I am with our choice of SVGs from. A year ago, that um, being able to zoom up to 100% or more, uh, up to 400%, uh, Taylor, yeah, on the right side, um, that that uh, all does work naturally is uh, is pretty neat. And the one other feature I'm not sure folks saw, but uh, the text underneath the title, where it says the cloud native landscape ping PDF, and if you click uh, ping. You can see that we're uh, no just past that Taylor, uh, not that one. Yeah, the second thing, you know, keep going. Yeah, uh, you can see that we're statically rendering uh, the ping and a PDF here that um, takes a second to load, but um, uh, to make this available in a in the default format. Um, Kind of a neat part of the app. Okay, anything else um, folks would uh, like to cover? I'm um, I'm expecting us to get a ton of uh, more feedback. I, that I essentially I'm planning to to publish this updated version and then get more feedback on the mailing list and, and iterate on it. And we do have a couple other things we're trying to fix ahead of time, but um, I think we should start looking into the alternative subcategories and see if that, if that works and is, is kind of feasible to lay out and, and um, include. So uh, Mr. Watson, I uh, had a question. Has there been any thought about um, SEO in the project? So, for instance, I know people are concerned about the categories. If you're doing a search on, say, Envoy, if someone's searching on load balancer, or reverse proxy, whatever, um, the SEO for, I guess, the interactive landscape, um, like uh, triggering those 
now we're talking about secondary uh, categories, but primary categories with the with the project. Um, we, uh, so our SEO is actually decent already in that the default view we're um, using Google sitemaps to um, include uh, just a single um, a single page for uh, every project on here. And so I, I believe it's the case that um, the change that we're talking about isn't actually going to impact uh, everyone. The, um, the the SEO too much um, in that because the pages that we're actually telling Google and the other search engines we want to we want them to look at is is just the default view with just the one project highlighted. Um, whether Google winds up taking a bunch of other ones as well is is I guess kind of an interesting question. Uh, interestingly, already on Google we're one of the top sources for SVGs for almost all of our projects, where the effort involved in actually trying to get correct official SVGs for everything has been uh, pretty enormous, but I, I feel like it's paying off. So this is Jerry Jennings again. I have uh, two things I wanted to note. One is that Michael and I have been working on um, taking a closer look at the projects that are related to security um, and trying to find a sensible grouping for those in the hopes that we might be able to have a sub map the way that we do for serverless that's focused on security. And we're, we've been making good progress on that. We raised that we were going to do that work in the mailing list and we've met a few times and hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have something that we can bring back and show to the group. Um, and related to that, I am on the, what has been known as the safe working group, but might become the security working group for CNCF. And that group is also very interested in this work and had planned separately to look at the landscape as it relates to security. And so they have asked us to present some detail on, on what we've been working on there. So that will happen in the next few weeks as well, which I assume is also of interest to this group. Yep. Okay, thanks for the update. Anything else folks would like to discuss today? Dan, this is Ginger. Um, other than adding new sandbox um, companies and things, what's your schedule for um, updates to the landscape? Do you have a set schedule like every quarter or how's that go? So we had been creating a new static landscape every month. But um, we put it on hold for the last two months as we were making these major changes. But um, once we publish it, it, it's generally getting updated every couple of days. Oh, wow. So, okay. um, but because there's, there's somebody, it, the way it works is you just open a pull request when something's uh, out of date or um, incorrect or, or you want to add a project. And um, I review it, and if it clearly fits into one of the existing categories, um, and um, your, you know, your pull request builds, then I'll go ahead and, and accept it. And with this new interactive, with the new dynamically generated static pages, we'll then instantly have new PDFs and pings of, of the landscape. And so for um, like KubeCon Seattle, do these get printed or do they just stay dynamic on, online? They do, so it's not just for KubeCon, but um, CNCF hosts a bunch of, uh, gets a booth at a bunch of conferences. So like Red Hat Summit and the cloud conferences and we're going to Hangzhou um, for the Alibaba cloud conference next week. And so we generally uh, do a printout where we have the cloud native trail map on the front side and then this landscape on the back. And whenever we do that, we'll just be printing out whatever the um, you know, latest version is or a week or two before the conference. Okay, great, thanks. Sure. Is there a specific NATS related change that you're looking for or just you would like to get that thought of it being a bigger, uh, not just streaming? 
No, 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 not at all. I was just uh, interested in the overall process, that's all. Yeah. So, I mean, until literally until this month, the process was that um, the Linux Foundation's graphic designer, Alex, would manually have to relay everything out for each version. And, you know, when we do category changes and stuff, it, it was actually pretty involved. So I, I, I do want to say again how cool I think it is to have this thing be automatically generated. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Anyone else want to speak up? This is Craig again, just about the notion of having more than one product you know, in different categories, uh, even if it's not open source. Uh, I'm trying to understand the principle. Uh, I understand part of the reasoning is probably around the sort of consumability and navigability uh, and busyness of the of the uh, landscape. But, you know, for example, JFrog has two products in two separate categories, neither of which is categorized as open source. So the question is, how do we, uh, you know, get our products properly represented in the landscape? Yeah. And unfortunately, um, we, we just made this decision about a year and a half ago. Um, and it's, it's, documented here under under new entries that if we allowed every smaller company to um, list all of its products that uh, the, the w we would easily have more than a, a thousand or a couple thousand um, items on here and it just would would become in, infeasible and so um, I, I, I do appreciate that it's it's um, uh, unhelpful for JFrog. So, I, I mean, I, 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 my, I think my current suggestion to you is, is to look at this alternative categories thing as being um, the best, the best solution for it. Um, so that, you know, that was the original policy. And then, uh, you, you know, we have these cloud companies in particular come along and say, hey, you know, we're, you know, 100 times bigger than most startups. So it just, it, it's, it's not correct to just say that we only have, we're only in one space. Um, but I it, admittedly, it's 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 an un, imperfect balance. Yeah, it does seem um, imperfect. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do some thinking uh, and see if I can come up. You know, I I think the alternative categories is a route uh, to getting the right information to people. I, I, maybe there are other things we can do collectively to think about that. I'll see if I can come up with a proposal to make to the group. Great. Okay, well, let's stop there. Um, thanks everyone for uh, participating. And um, I will speak to you on the mailing list and uh, in person again in a month. Bye now. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Nice.